Okay, well here's an LED light bulb and it's uh, pulsing on and off. That's known as flickering, a rather severe case here. But something interesting happens when I turn the bulb all the way up. I get what appears to be a continuous uh, white light. But if I use some test instrumentation, I can actually measure the amount of flicker that's remaining on this bulb. Um, and it's definitely not zero. Uh, more, even more interesting actually is that uh, some people can actually still perceive flicker at fairly low levels. And uh, it's one reason I uh, always look at that when I'm tearing down uh, LED bulbs on my YouTube channel. So uh, this uh, video is going to be all about measuring flicker. This is the lab setup I'm using when I uh, shoot my YouTube videos looking for this phenomena. It's obviously an oscilloscope and a solar cell. And of course, as the light hits the solar cell, it converts it to electricity. Um, and you get a graph. Now I set this bulb up here. It's a non-dimmable bulb. So, and I've set it up so it's flicking really, really badly uh, just to uh, give a nice little graph here. Let me inset the graph and <laughs> turn this bulb off because it's really quite annoying to look at. Um, flicker is defined as the ratio. Basically, you measure uh, the peak speed voltage of the AC component, the DC component. Uh, here's the formula, and uh, you throw it in, and you can get a quantitative uh, estimate of flicker. Uh, flicker is sort of a sub-100 hertz phenomena. Now, this is a great setup, uh, or it's worked really well for my YouTube videos, but uh, one question I sort of have now is I see a lot of bulbs in hardware stores available. You can actually, they actually have nice displays, they're all turned on. Uh, sure, it'd be nice to stop buying light bulbs, they're getting quite expensive. Uh, we need to have a kind of meter I could carry there, and actually even to places like workspaces and uh, retail settings, it would be interesting to uh, get a sense as to uh, the flicker of some uh, real-world environments. Okay, well here's a circuit, it's an Arduino, there's an OLED display, uh, a mode button here I'll get to in a moment. Uh, optical sensor here, also a fairly interesting bit of uh, design. Uh, two modes of operation. And this mode here basically is just recording the low value and the high value, and uh, it gives an indication of the percent flicker. And if I want to get a graphical representation, I can just press the button here. Right now, as you can imagine, there actually isn't a lot of flicker in my uh, movie making setup. Uh, but if I turn the bulb on just out of frame here, and it's been set up to flicker rather badly, uh, I can point the sensor to it. And of course, uh, quite a significant flicker pattern. And if I flip back into display mode, uh, like 20% flicker, uh, obviously a, a bulb that's um, not uh, providing very good quality light. But um, it's a good example of. Uh, how you could create a, f a portable flicker meter. Uh, this isn't a lot of circuitry. You can easily lay this out into a small circuit board. Um, let's take a first uh, a look at some of the engineering details. Uh, in particular, let's start with a sensor. Okay, let's talk about light sensors. Uh, this is the solar cell silicon-based uh, wafer. Uh, it's a fine sensor, but uh, it's not quite uh, perfect. Uh, obviously, it's physically relatively large, but more importantly, its spectral response isn't really mimicking the human eye. I mean, since I'm trying to measure flicker and trying to uh, estimate its sort of physiological response, uh, not a solid choice. Uh, I turn to an Avago part called the ADPS 9002. Uh, here it is on a little carrier card. It's a little tiny chip here. Let me just insert the data sheet. Uh, it's from Avago. Uh, more importantly, this graph here from the data sheet really caught my eye. Uh, it basically seems to indicate that they've uh, calibrated it so its spectral response uh, is very similar to the human eye, uh, which is exactly what I want. So. Um, I'm going to uh, build this uh, product around this sensor. Now, another nice thing about this is actually you can feed it 3.3 volts and it produces a nice strong signal out of it, so there's no additional need for an external op amp. So here's another quirk that caught me when I was uh, developing this code. Uh, obviously, the uh, light sensor is producing an analog signal, and of course, there's an ADD converter inside the actual uh, microprocessor chip. Um, and any microprocessor will have an internal reference voltage in which to compare and create a number. The Arduino actually has a whole bunch of choices, and one of the defaults is to use the power supply uh, on the chip. And uh, that, of course, tends to be pretty noisy. Because uh, if I just cover up the, the uh, sensor, you can still see it going uh, from 0 to like 4, 5, 7, uh, sort of indicating there's a signal there. Um, and it's not the sensor, because I can actually pull the wire that goes to the sensor and actually ground the entire uh, input pin. And uh, the, the uh, the signals will still be seen here, and this is actually not on the signal problem, but it's actually the uh, power supply is quite noisy. Uh, you have to put a, a voltage reference externally, um, or you can select the internal reference, but it's a fairly low voltage, I think it's like 1.1 volts, uh, which is uh, a little bit uh, too low. I, I don't really want to scale the 3.3 volt output of the sensor because that uh, introduces another noise problem. Okay, I made a slight change. I recompiled the code, and uh, you can see two clips here and a, a little capacitor. And what they are going off to is a, a lab power supply. The capacitor is actually decoupling uh, because there's about three feet of cable between the supply and the reference input. 
Uh, and now, of course, you can see that uh, when there's no voltage, i.e. the input's grounded, of course, it stays nice and quiet. So, uh, an interesting uh, little quirk I ran into. Now, as I develop this product further into like a portable item, of course, I need to replace this lab power supply. And I probably use something like a TL431 uh, voltage reference uh, to provide that nice, stable 3.3 volt uh, supply. Okay, well, the design phase is kind of finished. It's now just basically a packaging exercise. Uh, and we need a circuit board about this size here. There's a display. I would obviously need some sort of battery, and that would occupy that space. And this should be more than enough for an Arduino-type uh, processor. But that did lead me to one interesting uh, observation. I wanted a DigiKey to buy just some uh, small quantities. Uh, and DigiKey wants uh, not an unreasonable $3.25 just for the raw processor, but um, on uh, eBay I could actually go off and buy the entire assembly for a dollar and a half, I think, with free international shipping from China. No idea how they do that. Um, so ironically, it almost looks like it would be cheaper to try to actually integrate an entire nano module than trying to uh, solder down the CPU. Okay, uh, this is the uh, link for the uh, blog that I have that has the code if you're interested in looking at it. And uh, that was my investigations on building a portable battery-powered light flicker meter.